on the 23rd day of October, Halloween gave to me 23 heads skittering, 22 detectives thrilling, 21 wieners stretching, 20 zombies climbing, 19 Richards cheesing, 18 undead trains, 17 morticians regaling, 16 Vincents cracking, 15 Lees counting, 14 brides abiding, 13 Carfax abbeys, 12 fathers stripping, 11 au pairs drowning, 10 children creeping, 9 Roddy seizing, 8 snowy mazes, 7 bacons digging, 6 doorways bending, 5 children yowling, 4 zombie bulls, 3 haunted mirrors, 2 monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey there, everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of the 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, boy, we are coming down to it. It is Friday, October 23rd. Uh, Friday, as well as Friday. It depends on where you live, I suppose. Um, man, it, 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 we are getting so close to the end of this, and, uh, and I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, I've enjoyed our time together, everyone. But, but now is no time to rest on our laurels and harken back to days lying in the, the Elysian fields of nostalgia. No, 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 no. We are talking about a heavy hitter today, folks. Um, this was a bit of a late addition to the list, uh, mostly because I had another movie in this slot and then realized, you know what? I just want to watch The Thing. And so a movie got bumped <laughs> potentially till, uh, till, till next year or maybe just, you know, another week. Um after all this is over and then I'll catch up to it. But yeah, I just, I, it was one of those things where some friends and I uh, were chatting about we, what we wanted to watch for our next movie night. And uh, in addition to this project, uh, I, I continue to host movie nights for uh, a couple of close friends uh, on the weekends, you know, trying to be responsible. Like we're, we're trusting one another to keep ourselves safe so that when we come together, we are not, uh, potentially infecting one another. And it was a, a, a moment of conversation as we had uh, the thing. We decided to, to watch that. Uh, uh, Kim, one of the uh, people who joins me, um, was in, interested in seeing the thing again. It had been about, oh, I don't know, 18 months since I've seen it, so I was due. Uh, and, and Kim's husband, Ed, uh, hadn't seen it in about 38 years. So, uh, we all sat down to watch the thing on the big screen in the basement and it was, uh, it was terrific as it normally is. It's one of my favorite movies. Depends on the day you catch me. It might be my favorite movie. Um, watching it this time, uh, here's what I'm struck by. This is kind of like talking about the shining, right? Like it's, yeah, the thing is a masterpiece. There is no doubt about that. Um, you know, it is, of course, the story of a group of uh, scientists and pilots and doctors and, you know, a, a, an assembled team who is stationed at an Antarctic Research Institute. Um, when they run afoul of some crazy Norwegians, not Swedes, not uh, as McReady would have you believe, um, who... Uh, are chasing a dog into the American camp uh, to, to the extent that they have to kill this crazy Norwegian and uh, and take the dog in. When they go to investigate the Norwegian camp, they discover that uh, the Norwegians have pulled something from the ice and uh, and that something apparently uh, devastated every every man, woman, and child and as well as the camp itself uh, in the, the Norwegian base. So they get back and of course one thing leads to another and we discover that this alien is capable of perfectly reproducing its prey so that the, there are likely people in the camp, in the American camp, who have been infected and are now the thing, but you don't know who they are. And, and maybe one of the most famous moments in the entire film comes when uh, McReady is played by Kurt Russell is uh, reciting into a tape recorder, uh, sort of monologuing, journaling uh, about the state of the camp, and he says, uh, nobody trusts anybody anymore, and everybody's very tired. 
And that's sort of the vibe of the movie, and that's why I love it so much. It is it is a, uh, you know, uh, again, Hot Takes Ransdell here, uh, serving up fresh daily. Uh, the Thing is a an absolute study in how to do paranoid horror. There are very few movies that capture this tone right. And The Thing is... Uh, is the template for it. It is, this is how you do it. This is how you create um, a, an assembly of likable and or understandable characters. They feel very blue collar. They feel lived in. Um, after seeing the movie several times, as I have, uh, they all feel very distinct to me. I can understand that on, you know, a first or second viewing that the number of characters is such that you might be like, okay, now who's Windows again? Now, what does Bennings do? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, like, like with any film uh, worthy of, of uh, introspection uh, or inspection, um, it is uh, it, it, it really reveals itself the more you watch it and the more you see how these characters behave. Um, the way that Norris shirks responsibility very quickly, uh, suggesting that maybe... He is not so perfect a duplicate, uh, that he, he's not quite bait. Um, it's really something, uh, the way that th this movie captures that feeling of, um, can I trust anybody? And, you know, uh, uh, Wilford Brimley and as, as Blair and McReady have a conversation about that when Blair is being locked away, uh, where, uh, McReady says, you know, trust is a hard thing to come by these days. And... You know, in a different world, I think that the, particularly the American reaction to the pandemic being so, um, so, so like, uh, a, a confrontational within the, the country itself, the, the way that people have kind of turned on one another, uh, as, you know, like there are mass wares and non wear mass wares and people who believe in science and people who don't believe in science and that kind of thing. And, and that's never the conversation in the thing. Like, this is... It, the, the thing is what you would expect the traditional response to be. Which is, holy shit, I don't trust all the people around me because they could potentially be harmful to me. And that is sort of the paranoia that the, the thing captures. And it is that, uh, you know, virus infection kind of fear that somebody could without without looking like they're uh harmful at all like a completely benign person in your life could do something to infect you and kill you and that is sort of the the plague fear um so it operates on that level as well uh the the infection the pandemic kind of fear the uh the lack of trust and the paranoia um, it doesn't fuck around and try to have some half ass love story going on underneath it. Um, it is a very pure story of guys whose lives are just entirely interrupted by this, uh, this thing, this creature, and then they have to fight to destroy it. And there is a point uh, that I dearly love where McCready is like, you know, is it's uh, him and the you know some of the final survivors, the ones that he knows are human, and he says, you know, none of us are going to make it out alive, but neither is that thing. That's the it, like their mission be goes from hey, we're operating this research institute to we have to stop a threat to an existential threat to mankind, and we're probably going to sacrifice our lives to do it, and we all just have to get cool with that right now. Um, I love all that stuff, man. I love these characters so much. I love the the fact that uh, that Childs and McCready have this rivalry, but also there is kind of a grudging respect there. I think um, I love Kurt Russell in general, but I, there's that moment in this movie where he gets locked out and busts back into the supply room with his sticks of dynamite and frozen beard and the flamethrower in one hand where he's just like, I'll take us all to hell tonight. That kind of shit, man, that does my heart good. Uh, so look, it, it's Friday. It's October 23rd. We got to start the weekend with a banger. We've only got one more weekend left. Uh, Halloween is not, not tomorrow, but next Saturday. So, uh, we, we have to approach this like every moment counts. 
And The Thing is one of those every moment counts kind of movies for me. It is the movie that I watch, uh, sometimes accidentally in this case, but when I watch it, I, I'm reminded of the fact that there are some things that only a horror movie will do. There are some topics that uh, horror movies are uniquely capable of discussing. And the idea of this sort of virus paranoia is more in the realm of horror than any other genre. And, um, you, and when you do it right, when you have this, you know, uh, this existential loss of identity as part of the fear as well, like there are so many levels upon which, uh, the thing can work depending on what you are most afraid of. Uh, whether it's the body horror stuff, the the excellent uh, effects work of Rob Bottin in capturing like nightmares on film, that stuff still really holds up. Um, you know, it it really is just across the board. There's not really a, a lot of missteps in the movie. I will say that my biggest complaint with the film is the final confrontation be between Kurt Russell. And the the final version of the thing is a little bit anticlimactic. It's fine, but that's kind of all it is. But th there's like seven minutes of fine in a movie that is otherwise outstanding. And so, so it ranks very high for me as, as one of the great horror films of all time. Um, I don't know of anyone that feels apathetic about it. And I'm not sure how you could. I, I feel like this is a movie that demands that you react to it in some way. Even if it's just like, ugh, no, I don't want to see all this goop dripping. What, uh, they killed dogs? Fuck this. Like, I understand that reaction. I don't understand, like, eh, it's fine. It's just a bunch of guys in the snow, I guess. That would be a reaction that would that would surprise me. But, uh, but that is not our reaction. That is certainly not my reaction. I love this movie. I think you ought to watch it. It's a Friday night. Uh, the weather is starting to turn. Uh, there's a, enough of a chill in the air that you can kind of get away with watching a movie set, set at the Antarctic and uh, and and feel that kind of uh, empathetic uh, cold, that, that chill that gets in your bones. So uh, enjoy. Enjoy the thing. Uh, and, and enjoy your weekend. Uh, I'm very excited uh, for this final stretch of movies. There's some really fun stuff. Uh, ahead of us some stuff that um, in some cases I haven't seen but have meant to for years um, and and in some cases uh, there are movies that I, I think are absolutely essential Halloween watches so um, we are going to get into some of those in the next week uh, please come back and join me again here on Legion Podcasts as always you can reach me at bo, B-O at legionpodcasts.com uh, if you want to drop me a line, let me know what you're watching, what you're doing, how you're feeling, uh, how your feet are doing. Uh, I don't know. Uh, don't tell me about your feet now that I think about it. But uh, but drop me a line. Tell me how you're enjoying the holiday, how you're enjoying the show. And, uh, and that'll do it for this time. We'll see you tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, for our final week uh, is about to begin of Halloween movie goodness. So... Uh, until then, have a great Friday, everybody. Have a spooky Friday, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>